Well, good evening, friends, and uh, welcome to this edition of Virtual Vespers. Maybe you recognize the room where I'm sitting. Uh, did you know this fireplace works? I came in here today and turned this thing on. Now, it's probably not the right time of year for it, but it works, and it works pretty well. But uh, I wanted to come to you uh, today from a different place in the church, and maybe over these next uh, couple of weeks as we continue to do this, uh, we'll be meeting from different locations uh, in the church, but today, uh, this evening, I wanted to come to you from the senior suite, as we call it. Uh, this room has uh, held a lot of things over the years. Uh, every week, uh, when we are normally meeting here, your deacons and staff meeting here for uh, prayer before Sunday school, for uh, just a way to share concerns uh, for the things during the week and the week that's coming up. There's a Sunday school class that meets in here every Sunday when we're back to when we're here together. Uh, some of you have been in this room to play games uh, and share meals with one another. We uh, here lately on during our Easter sunrise, we come back here and many of us have uh, a breakfast in this room uh, every week, every Tuesday. Me and a, a few of you gather in here for Tuesday Bible study, and afterwards we go out uh, for lunch. So I thought it'd be might be helpful to it might be good to to be uh, in this room coming to you this evening to remind you of just a, another space that we share together uh, as we're here uh, this evening I, I, just a few things I, I want to uh, catch you up on before we uh, read some scripture and pray uh, with one another uh, first of all I hope you're uh, getting uh, the chance to see our, our worship videos here online or maybe on YouTube or possibly still through the emails that we're sending. Uh, we're continuing to streamline those uh, as we are, as by now getting most of the service onto one uh, continuous video. Uh, we're going to be recording uh, some elements for that those upcoming worship services tonight, uh, and so uh, I hope you've been able to join us in worship in those ways. Uh, we are still... Uh, uh, doing, you, you're all still doing well. I want to commend you uh, on continuing to support the work of the church, whether it's your giving here uh, at the church, dropping it off through the mail, online. Just commend you for continuing to support that work. We're going to be, over the next uh, week or so, going to be using some of uh, our funds that we have been gathering, some efforts to show appreciation to our health care workers. We're going to be doing some things that I'll let you in on, on some of that uh, later on this week, maybe through, uh, again, our email. But we want to uh, just show them uh, how much we appreciate them and what all they're going through. Uh, and in that same vein, I want to encourage you, if you're like us at home, uh, still receiving things in the mail, UPS, uh, FedEx, that sort of thing, I want to encourage you to maybe leave a note for your postal worker, leave a note for some of those folks and let them know uh, how much you appreciate what they're doing, that they're out there working to make sure we get all the things that we need and, and when we need them. Uh, as for uh, reopening, I'm sure most of you now have uh, heard the news uh, from our governor uh, about sort of a, a plan for those things. Um, right now, as it is, the order is still sort of is not I don't want to say restricting church gatherings, but it's certainly not encouraging them, and I don't want to encourage that either. Uh, the best information I've been given is is waiting for either the the number of cases to plateau or in decline for at least two weeks before we begin to think about reopening. Uh, I think that's pretty sound advice, and, and I'll be watching that. Uh, I do want to make you aware, uh, in case you, you you might be thinking, as I did once, that whenever we're able to come back together, it'll be like flipping a switch. Well, it, it won't. Uh, we'll be sort of piecing things together, wading back in to uh, normalcy. And that may mean uh, smaller numbers gathered. It may mean having to have uh, alternatives still for worship, but just in different locations. So I want you to be aware that be praying uh, not only for a time when we can come together, but be praying for uh, numbers to, to plateau and decline, Lord, we hope they decline uh, as fewer people are diagnosed and especially as fewer people uh, are getting sick and dying. Uh, you'll be uh, aware of some of those uh, reopening things uh, as they come. And, and as always, as I remind you in these weekly 
um, Vespers. If, if there's anything you need during the week, anyway, we as your church can help, please don't hesitate to call us here at the church office. Message us uh, via Facebook or contact uh, your family's deacon to let us know uh, just what it is uh, that you need help with and what we can help you to do. So uh, as we come together this evening by the fire here in the senior suite, uh, let us begin our time together uh, with a word of prayer. Eternal God, we come to you this rainy day, Lord, thanking you for all the many blessings you give us, thanking you for this time when we can join together in vespers in prayer and reflection. We thank you for this week. We thank you for the time we have gotten to share with family, Lord, as we're still sheltering in place. But Lord, we pray for uh, just uh, patience all the more as we wait uh, for that day that's coming when we'll be together again. So Lord, now as we come together for a time of prayer and reflection, we pray that your spirit be with us as we are in our homes, as we are joined together through the connection of the internet. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So this coming Sunday is often what's called Good Shepherd Sunday. And, and you'll hear more about that uh, in the worship uh, service this coming Sunday. But uh, one of the readings, the psalm for this Sunday, as you might imagine, is Psalm 23. And as I read this psalm, uh, I'm going to be reading it in the New Revised Standard Version, the version of Scripture I, I often read. But I know we all know it probably best in the King James. But I want to read it to you uh, in, in the New Revised Standard, Psalm 23. Uh, and then we'll have a time of prayer, and then I'll lead us, uh, or I'll lead us in a little bit of reflection, and then our benediction. So, hear these words from the twenty-third psalm: "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures; he leads me beside still waters; he restores my soul; he leads me in the right path for his name's sake." Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now as we come together for our time of prayer, I, I want us to follow sort of the, the three-fold format we've been using uh, during these Vespers. Uh, to first pray for the church, both our church here at Williams and the church universal, as we are still considering and talking uh, about what it's going to look like to reopen, to meet together again. Uh, to pray for your clergy as we make those decisions, pray for one another for patience, as not only as we wait for the days when we can come together, but patience in how we might actually be able to come back together. So pray for the church uh, in this time, and to pray for others. As I, as I mentioned to you, we've been, uh, over these last few weeks, talking about those not only who are our health care workers, those who are sick, uh, whether it's with, from COVID-19 or from other things, for their families uh, and friends. But also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, praying for those who are helping, helping us to find some sense of normalcy in the midst of all of this, whether that is our, our postal workers, our delivery drivers, whether it's those who are still making our food so we can go pick it up or have it brought to our car curbside. Uh, take some time this week to pray for them. And then, of course, take some time to pray for yourself. This is still, as it lingers on, not normal. And some of us, I think, are, are finding a way, uh, or finding our way to feeling normal when we don't really want to feel normal in the midst of all of this. So um, take some time as we pray for the church and we pray for others. Make sure to pray for yourself and ask God to continue to strengthen you, to give you courage uh, to face each day as it's new and, and different. So let's take some time together now just uh, to pray those prayers together. Pray for the church, pray for others, 
and pray for ourselves. So let's pray together. Gracious God, we come to you this evening again praying for, for your church. Lord, as we continue on this strange journey that is so unfamiliar to us, we trust that you are our good shepherd leading us through it. God, we trust that you are already on ahead of us, calling us. Lord, to follow you. Give us strength and courage in the days ahead as we still, as we still, Lord, meet together separately in our homes with our families. Lord, help us not only long for the day when we come back together, but realize just how much the gathering together for worship and fellowship truly means. And Lord, we pray for others, those in our lives who make Make our lives just a little less chaotic and a little more normal. God, we lift them up to you, trusting that you bless them. God, that you'll protect them, Lord, as they, as they continue on in their essential work. God, we pray for ourselves. That you give us strength, Lord, that you give us energy when, we're, when we feel so tired, God. That you remind us with each new day that we draw closer to a time when we will be able to be back together. Lord, help us to not forget whatever lessons it is we may learn in this season. Especially those lessons, Lord, that draw us closer to you and closer to one another. So God, we lift these prayers up to you now in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. So the 23rd Psalm. Uh, many of you, well, most of you, I think, probably recognize its words, particularly in the King James. But many of you probably know that these are the words that I read each and every time that we gather by the graveside of another one of our friends and loved ones to whom we have to say goodbye, if only for a short while. I read these words, the 23rd Psalm, and I always read them at graveside in the King James because I think there's something about that 17th century English that helps us to catch the poetry of the Psalms just a, a little bit better. But I always read these words at graveside because I, I think even outside of the Christian faith, their words well, they're words that sound familiar. They're words that calm our spirits. They're words that give us hope. And so I hope that throughout the rest of this week, as we look forward to gathering for worship virtually together online on this Good Shepherd Sunday, that we'll hear the words of the psalmist, the words that talk about God, our Lord, as this good shepherd, provides for our every need, who on the one hand walks us beside still waters, lies down in green pastures with us, and at the very same time walks with us even through the darkest valley. There may be days, I don't know about for you, but for me, in the midst of all of this, where, where some days I feel like I've gotten it figured out. I feel like, okay, this is what, you know, this is just how it is now. We're going to get in this rhythm, and, and this is what we're going to do. And then there are days when I forget what day it is. I feel like I'm sometimes being led by still waters, Reminded of the gift of my family, the gift of time, and the gift of quiet moments alone on the front porch. And then there are days when the valley seems pretty dark and I'm un unsure about when this will all be over and what this is all going to look like and 
and what the world's going to be like when it's over. But I think the words of the psalmist remind us that no matter what it is, God is with us. That the Good Shepherd goes with us. Not behind us, not above us in the clouds where we can't see, but with us. All the way. So as we look forward to this Good Shepherd Sunday, I, I pray, my prayer for you, is that you remember that we belong to the Good Shepherd. And right now it may seem as though we're, we're lost out in the dark thicket. But the shepherd's voice calls us and comes with us no matter where we go. It's my prayer for you this week. And as we end our time together now, I pray that you stay safe, you stay together, you find ways to, to, to keep your mind and your faith and your eyes fixed on Christ as we go through this together. As we end our time this evening with one another, I want us to end, as we always do, praying the Lord's Prayer together. So would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And God bless you throughout the rest of this week, and as we join together virtually for worship on this Good Shepherd Sunday.